Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and our orders line is wide open. 800, uh, that's 888-212-8871, and Mitzi and Chris and Stephen are available to take your phone orders. If you place your orders now, of course, we have our uh, a, a Collagen Max special on, and uh, we have lots of three-bottle specials, six-bottle specials. Get an extra bottle, free shipping, over $150. We ship worldwide, and we provide email consults to anybody, and phone calls to those who are our customers uh, who have purchased even just one bottle. They get access to our live stream channel. Uh, we uh, really appreciate your support out there, and we appreciate that we can support your health with the best nutraceuticals on the planet and the best advice. And so place your orders right now, 888-212-8871. Uh, John, we have you on for just one segment. I want you to give us an update on what you're hearing on the grapevine in terms of what's going on in news. Uh, there's yes, a couple sir. of things. I got a call from Paul Martin, and I'd like to. You, you probably know about it, so maybe you can summarize because you have your own radio show on Republic Radio from 7 to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday, Central Standard Time, where Ann Morrison's your co host. What, what's the latest that you're hearing? Well, uh, from Paul Martin, we're getting some updates on uh, what's going on with the uh, MERS virus and the various flu viruses. Um, very disturbing stuff. He's connected to some people at some uh, rather unusual places. Uh, research uh, individuals who are having difficulty uh, for the first time apparently getting samples from the various countries that have provided samples freely in the past of these various viruses. Right. Uh, that's very concerning because uh, the belief is that there's more to it than they want to be exposed. Uh, but on but top of my list today, doctor, is uh, the Zimmerman trial. It just went to the jury less than an hour ago about Oh, 35, 40 minutes ago, it went to the jury. Um, This is something I've spent most of my adult life dealing with, is criminal defense. And uh, I I couldn't tell you how many murders I've investigated. Uh, Prosecuting attorneys and chiefs of police tend to be fairly uh, honest and forthright and stand-up guys and gals. And for uh, the local prosecutor and local chief of police said uh, basically, there's no probable cause to even arrest this man, George Zimmerman, let alone file charges. And, of yeah. course, they did not. And that was the right thing to do. This was a local matter. It never should have been anything other than a local matter dealt with by the professionals who deal with these things seven days a week. Instead, yeah. uh, the national news media got involved. The state of Florida got involved. Charges were filed against a man that never should have been filed. Uh, my belief... And this is some, this is my area of expertise. My belief is that the people behind this uh, knew from the beginning that this was a loser, that they were commencing a matter that was doomed to failure. And that's precisely what they're going to get. That's precisely what they want to get is a not guilty verdict for George Zimmerman. And um, if and when that happens, uh, there will be... Uh, civil disorder leading to riots in many major cities that have a large uh, minority population. Miami, of course, is near the top of the list, but we've got the usual suspects, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, New York, Los Angeles, uh, where there's large minority populations. Um, Everyone would be advised, first of all, uh, your homeowner's insurance, your business insurance will not, there may be exceptions, I'm not aware of, will not pay for any loss sustained as a consequence of civil disorder or rioting. You're on your own, baby. And that's, you may wonder why the Korean businessmen were using deadly force to defend their businesses in Los Angeles in 1992, 21 years ago. Well, they had no choice. <laughs> uh, so you're saying that basically was. most people's homeowner insurance, if there's public rioting, basically becomes void. That's true for life insurance, that's true for homeowner insurance, that's true for business insurance. Anything due to civil disorder, rioting, or war, or terrorism, by the way, is yeah, not but, uh, covered. You, you, you believe in Smith & Wesson insurance, or, or uh, Glock insurance, or uh, 12-gauge or 20-gauge <laughs> shotgun insurance. Those work really well, and they don't require well, monthly that's... payments. And as the old saying goes, when, when the seconds count, the police are minutes away. Uh, yeah. You're always good with the one-liners. I like what the other rules is. Two is one and one is none. It's called the more rule, which means if you think you're prepped, two always becomes one in a crisis, and one turns into nothing. 
which I think is funny. Right. So exactly. uh, what do you predict? Uh, do you predict that when I heard the comments by Obama, which, you know, he's got an amazing talent, like the I call the anti-Midas touch of turning something to crap. He actually said, and it's hard to believe this, that he said it. You know, it could be a joke if it was a late-night TV host, and it might be actually funny. But he said, if I had a son, it would look like Trayvon Martin, which is a gangbanger. Like, this is, this is a very, very bad statement for our president to make, inflaming a race war where... Jimmerman shouldn't have been charged. In fact, the local police weren't going to charge him. It was only because the state got involved in the media that they actually said, well, yeah, we better charge him. And then they tried to trump up charges. Even if he went on appeal, this would never win. So I expect him to be dismissed. I expect him to be charged with nothing. And uh, I expect riots. And uh, this well, is I, not I reasonable. Yeah, and it's not reasonable, by the way. What I'll tell you what people are concerned about, and here, here's how this can go one of two ways. First, he'll be discharged, and there'll be riots. Or if they charge him and try to charge him with you know, manslaughter or first-degree murder, this is not going to be good. We're talking about skinhead city. Well, that's exactly what, what I'm really concerned about in 2016 is not another Hillary Clinton taking over from Obama, but America really taking a very, very hard right turn to what I call real white right ring, white armed to the teeth neo Nazism. Because when pe if people get pushed against the wall, God help the government or anybody else who tries to take our guns. Well, it's, you may not be aware of this, but at the last minute, uh, almost literally last minute, the prosecutors are prosecuting attorney in uh, Sanford, Florida, threw in uh, an additional option for the jury to consider that would be manslaughter, which, of course, the original prosecutor uh, evaluated that and rejected it as well. Uh, right. What, hap what happened between those two men that night did not come to, did not raise to the level of, a manslaughter either, which is why he wasn't charged with anything. Well, look, uh, if somebody's smashing your nose and they're banging your head on the ground because they're going to crack your skull and kill you, <clears throat> uh, that is not manslaughter. That's self-defense. I mean, anybody anywhere in any state, in any country, in Switzerland, would say, you've got to be kidding. Absolutely. Well, banging your head on the ground is one thing, uh, but banging against concrete means you're trying to kill you. It, no oh yeah, they're going to kill you. In fact, you're, if you're as a doctor, I can tell you, you got two or three bangs in your your history. The fact that he's alive is kind of miraculous. He probably got a head injury. God knows what was damaged to his brain. He got his nose smashed up and his face smashed up. The right. kid who was leaning over him, smashing him down there, was a gangbanger that was a football player. This is not they showed the cherubic 12-year-old uh, uh, kid that they show. This is a great big hulking guy that's beating the hell out of this guy, Zimmerman, who, by the way, is also you know, a legal American citizen who is just working on a patrol protecting this area. So right. I, I don't understand. Well, what they want to do is they want to disarm patrols regularly. Like we have an eight-home gated community, and most of the people in here are pretty well armed. There's no way in hell the government's going to take our guns. None. Zero. Nada. Not going to happen. Just like they're not going to put a smart meter around my home. Be, the defense did something I, I really compliment the defense in Zimmerman's case. They brought in right. a slab of concrete today into the, jur into the courtroom to demonstrate yeah. uh, this, uh, the, this concrete and the man's head being beat against the concrete. They also had uh, cardboard cutouts showing the relative size of Mr. Zimmerman and Mr. Martin. And, uh, and, right. uh, and just to, uh, before we get away here, the prosecutor yeah. referred to this 17-year-old football player who could have joined the U.S. Marine Corps uh, as a child. Uh, the U.S. Marine Corps does not... You've got to be children. kidding. Uh, today, in closing yeah. arguments, the prosecutor attorney re referred to a 17-year-old football player who could have been in the Marine Corps as a child. No. Uh, they did, and they're, they're obviously playing to a pure emotion here, uh, the emotion of the six women on the jury. It's a, it's, it's uh, at the edge of being... Either way, <clears throat> either way this goes, it's going to be bad. And, of course, Obama is the great divider. You know, He's not the guy to bring everybody together in America across races and bring them all Americans together. He's here to divide, to destroy, to deconstruct America. With the Nutra Medical Report, and uh, and uh, you've got some inside information. Paul Martin contacted me last night, and I talked to him this morning. 
about the uh, recent conference between uh, government departments, you know, DHS, etc., and a number of international scientists. One of the scientists came out and made the bold statement that the H7N9 out of China was a advanced recombinant bioweapon. Um, we know that the Hodge is on right now. When people start returning in the next few months, August, September, from Saudi Arabia, we're going to start seeing some major surges in the MERV, CLV2, the coronavirus, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Coronavirus. Uh, I expect to see an airborne plague hit us early this fall. Uh, I could be wrong, it may be delayed, there may be a new recombinant required where it has to mix with H3N2 uh, to make it more dangerous. But my guess is the case fatality rate, if it gets in the deep lungs, is 80%. Uh, many cases are very mild for the uh, coronavirus, but if it gets in your deep lungs, you're in the ICU, an 80% chance of dying in Saudi Arabia and other countries in Europe. The um, CLV, the, the H7N9, is 36% case fatality rate, which is nine times higher than even in third world countries around the world at the 1918 flu and 18 times higher than the case fatality rate in 1918 to 1920 uh, here in America, which is 2.5%. That's a big deal. It means that it's going to shut things down tighter than a drum. People need to be prepared with our first-line defense kit, our Neutrodyne, Allison, Allison Med, Alimax, Alimed, uh, our nutraceuticals or NIOSH masks. You need to be prepared for civil defense, for food, water, shelter, and extra water supplies. Uh, they need to get ready now, N-O-W now, because uh, we know that we have a wounded administration under Obama that's been very arrogant. Bob Woodward's talked about the fact that uh, this, and even uh, Ollie North has said, you know, in testimony, that uh, the reason why Obama is acting this way is because the administration is unbelievably arrogant. And uh, Obama is out of touch with reality. That's why even now they've just yanked the... Uh, Muslim Brotherhood, after giving $1.3 billion in armaments to the military, and they, uh, they, they don't know which way to go because the Russians are saying yet, and the Chinese are saying absolutely no way are we going to allow you to do regime change in Syria. So we have all these things brewing on top of the fact that now we know Bernanke's on his way out at the end of this year, which is less than six months away now, five and a half months. That means that the interest rates will rise, and we're seeing a, a price of gold now drop so low that it actually costs more to take it out of the ground in multiple mines around the world than it actually is in the common price because they've been manipulating the paper cost of gold because they don't even have it in their possession. They're gambling with paper where they have no physical possession. This is craziness, and people don't understand that we're deep into the end game, aren't we? There's something bad about to happen. And I tell people you need to get your nutraceuticals in place now. You need to get your health in place now. That's the first prep. You need to make sure you're fit physically. You're taking natural medicine, not drugs. You need to be up to speed on your you know, basic life support, basic trauma support, CERT training with your local fire department. You need to be ready because things are going to start rocking and rolling, aren't they? Yes, and I have some disturbing news about that. Um, the the center that is being used to to analyze the uh, animal samples that they're bringing in from Saudi Arabia to try to find the uh, host for this MERS for the Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus is uh, uh, is a network of uh, northeastern laboratories and institutions of learning so th these are these samples are not even being analyzed by the national biodefense laboratories and right. i'm not sure i looked at the website they don't they don't say that they have the capabilities of a uh, bio lab level three well they're, they're bsl3 certified and what they're doing is they're handling what's called bsl4 specimens which is negative pressure in full isolation and total body suits. Uh, the guy I trained under back 40 years ago was actually the BSL facility when the virus got out of containment and all his colleagues died because he was not there that day with the flu. Uh, <laughs> what people need to understand is that uh, this is nothing to play around with. And these so-called universities, many of them like the University of New Orleans with Katrina struck, 
didn't have BSL-4 certified facility levels. Anybody could have walked in there, passed the chain link fence, and grabbed those bioweapons. Uh, they weren't properly secured with security officers, didn't have negative pressure. I mean, it's just stupid what they're doing. And a lot of these weapons uh, don't take a whole lot of biological steps and equipment, you know, a few million dollars, and way you go, you've got an advanced bioweapon. So when they created viruses like this advanced, you know, uh, H5N1 new recombinant that's a super virus, they actually built the, what they call the Armageddon virus. It's sitting there. People say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. I said, you need an interesting skill. It's called reading. You need to read, you know. I, I get sick and tired of people trying to pretend that Dr. Deagle is just, man, he's weird. Why does he say these things? Is he negative? No, I'm positive. I want you to survive. I want their government to kind of start doing what they're supposed to do, secure our borders, including aircraft coming in with can be carrying a death virus from Saudi Arabia because if the Hajj actually releases this virus and it comes back here to America it can shut things down tighter than a drum people don't understand just how what I call a biologically triggered martial law how ugly it'll look they don't well, understand over in, over in England the, uh, the, the uh, person that they were treating who managed to transfer this virus to two other people one in his family member and the other one his uh, roommate in the hospital was being treated as a bio at a bio level of four out of four and right. we are not doing the same thing and after no. he died well actually, actually after the doctor saw him they were in fully uh, contained suits disposable suits all the way from the top of their head to the tip of their toes and those suits were incinerated and I suspect all his bedding was incinerated and hopefully his equipment too that was used yeah, to treat exactly. him and yeah, exactly. uh, but, but we are not we're not prepared to incinerate anything what the let me tell you the um, biosafety level four is an enumerated list. In other words, those things that are handled by a biosafety level four laboratory uh, have to be enumerated on a list that is maintained by uh, somebody in the government. I suppose. Uh, uh, I suppose the president could put it on the list, but um, yeah. so these include Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Ebola, G Lassa fever, Machupo, Marb. Berg and tick-borne encephalitis virus complex and uh, other encephalitis and hemorrhagic fevers. They have they have not put on the, on this enumerated list uh, this MERS, and so it can't go into a biosafety level four laboratory. Now let me tell you what's on a biosafety level three, which is I hope it's in a bio level safety three. And what it is is that it is um, it's applicable to clinical diagnostic teaching and research facilities, and uh, they're involving involving indig indigenous or exotic strains of agents which may cause serious or potential lethal disease as a result of exposure by inhalation. We've been talking wow. about this MERS virus for a long time. They don't know how it is passed from one person to another. They don't know. Or how long the incubation is either. Yeah. And, of course, once it's in the deep lungs, which is the only way to isolate the virus in culture, its case fatality rate is in orbit. And I want to point out a couple things from uh, Joel Skousen's latest newsletter, which I'm going to post up. Joel's on at least twice a month, or often more often. And uh, he listed a couple of things. That people need to realize that if you just keep your eyes open, that the police state is already here. It's just not fully implemented or exercised. And he lists five things. Number one, police abuse of citizens' fundamental rights. Number two, courts protect members of the police state. Number three, local, state, and federal governments are complicit in squashing dissent and protecting illegal police behavior. Number four, universal government spying, which, of course, is obvious with Snowden, where you can't even fly over Euro European airspace, and they brought that jet, the Bolivian jet, uh, down literally assuming that they had found Snowden, which they were wrong. And uh, that, to me, is an obscenity. And they had to apologize to the Bolivian uh, president. And number five, government falsifies terrorism to justify tyrannical acts. And then when we look at, I had an interesting argument with an ex-military person uh, recently when I went to a pharmacy. Uh, his first name is Eric. And uh, he said, well, I think that, uh, you know, that Obama's done, uh, stripped a lot of the powers from what Bush put in with, with uh, 
the uh, Patriot Act. Well, that's a false lie. Obviously, he got a little huffy about it, but the fact is, I said, no, that's not true. I said, you put in the not only executive orders, including the latest one, which basically it has a very long and protracted term on in terms of taking over all communications with DHS. Uh, but no, that's not true at all. And uh, uh, the fact is, we have a situation now where DHS can, and Obama, Obama can grab literally uh, everybody's communications and shut them down during a state of national emergency. Um, this is not open to discussion. We've got the National Defense Authorization Act, the Appropriations Act, and this latest executive order. We have a turnkey system now. All they need is the slightest crisis, a bond market blow, an airborne plague, coronal mass ejection. You just take, I call the devil's health kitchen menu. There's a whole lot of things that could happen that could bring some level, whether it's a bank holiday uh, where you got guys you know, with flak jacket ski masks at every bank and your ATM card only allows you to withdraw X number of dollars per day, even if you need to buy groceries or gas. One of the things the government, of course, always plans, I confronted the FEMA director back in March of 2001 because I work with these guys, and the FBI and CDC is... Um, the very first thing they're going to do is shut off the power. They're going to clamp off circuit, you know, communications. They even want to make sure that even repeaters can't be used by ham radio operators. And there's hams listening. They know that they can set up a repeater and every 75 miles bounce a signal all over the ionosphere and literally send everything from Morse code to encrypted communications. I will be meeting uh, here shortly with someone with a peer-to-peer encrypted uh, network system that we're developing which will completely sidestep the ability of the government to block our communications and people need to know that's why we need your support we need you to purchase your nutraceuticals exclusively for Nutramedical we need you to be on our sidelines because we're one of the very few that are actually willing to ask these questions and present information and I'm one of the very few in fact probably the only one on, on this or any other network that actually has been on the inside and worked with the FBI and CDC in Operation Top Off and Dark Winter, has had security key level clearance and actually been inside the Quantum Array at Falcon, Colorado, Shaver Air Force Base. I know exquisite details, not secondhand, not by some reading somebody's book, but by being there. Now, people need to take it seriously. So when I tell you something, this isn't opening up for your damned opinion. It's just something you need to take it to the bank. It's just the way it is. Ugly as it is, again, when you see a doctor who's a good surgeon or a doctor like me, if I give you the truth and I give you an alternative that's non-toxic, where there's a geopolitical or a spiritual answer, you need to take it to the bank and stop fighting against it, thinking that it's just a conspiracy theory. No, we're way down the rabbit hole now, aren't we, Ann? Yes, and I think that uh, Snowden did uh, did leak that information, and even though I don't agree with what he did, uh, it's obvious that not only is the NSA spying on us, they're spying around the world, and I think some of our some of our uh, well, allies are very concerned about that. Well, here's what's going on. We have a basically what I call the economic and cybernetic phase of World War III has already started, probably around 9/11 or even back to Oklahoma City. Uh, the fact is a cyber war has been going on for decades. An economic war, a clash war in terms of who's going to run the world economic system. That's why the Chinese and the Russians and the Iranians are trying to sidestep even use of the petrodollar, which is a world currency, the U.S. dollar. Uh, and this is what the real war is about. That's why more Margaret Daffy's dead. That's why Saddam Hussein is dead. Or, that, or if he's not dead, he's getting a hot rock massage with plastic surgery in Indonesia. Um, no, what people need to really grasp here is that reality is a lot weirder, a lot nastier than they want to believe because it's too ugly. They're little children. They just think that, oh, Dr. Diggle, it's not that bad, is it? No, it's a lot worse than you can imagine. But there is a solution. Number one, first, you put God first. Number two, listen to what we're saying and get yourself prepped up personally and your neighbors and get ready for the fact that we're giving you some, you know, not with absolute facts or dates or anything, we're giving you high probabilities that this is what their characters are doing. And under Obama, they didn't strip off like our, my little contact, Mr. Eric, said, uh, ex-military. They didn't strip off powers that were put in the Patriot Act. They had a hell of a lot more layers. So under Obama, they have a turnkey totalitarian state that would make, you know, Brave New World and Aldous Huxley blush. I mean, it's like, whoa. I think that it was a meeting between, you know, uh, Snowden and Aldous Huxley, that would be if they mocked it up and did it as an actor on something like, you know, 
uh, an intellectual channel like the book channel that would be an interesting interview have two actors playing Snowden and Aldous Huxley that would be interesting <laughs> yeah that would be interesting yeah he's uh, yeah. he's found a niche for himself and I hope he survives uh, Russia if, he, if that's well, where he goes I, I think he will uh, Russia is trying to play games because at least in the initial phase Russia wants to get involved with the financial game but ultimately it's like um, Joel Skousen says Russia and China are not our friends the extreme elements in Russia and China have been fed nuclear and other technologies over the years even to make sure they had targeting of US cities uh, America's being prepared like the daughter of Babylon to be eventually burned with fire and as much as people don't want to believe that sorry to burst your bubble but the globalists don't want an independent America that's not fried they want flambéed America uh, and the only way it's going to come back is if people quote stop their quote easy to believeism churches and start becoming real Christians really stand up to these politicians of both legs of the beast system they have both compartments of the snake party then get rid of the dialectic and stop the BS and start to realize that we need to prep spiritually first, physically next, and we have to start realizing that there are, I'm a, you know, I call a political agnostic. I don't see any politicians out there that are, we call 100%. The closer ones I've seen are Rand Paul. Rand Paul, to me, should be our next president. Uh, one of the worst possible candidates would be Hillary Clinton. But I see a lot of elements in the Republican Party that make me very nauseated like John Bonner who won't do his damn job I mean Obama should already have been impeached uh, the danger that we can have martial law is started off by any of these multiple crises we talk about is extremely concerning and I don't see any real action on the part of American citizens to push their politicians to say we need to stop just standing on the sidelines here because Obama is just waiting as an opportunist for the next crisis because they have a turnkey totalitarian state ready to just push the button. Uh, it's not going to take a hell of a lot. Well, I think that's one reason that I'm so concerned about having MERS in uh, New York City, in the center of New York City, in an educational laboratory. I'm not even sure they are a BSL-3. Uh, they're not listed. No, they're not. They're, they're not BSL-3. You can guarantee that they don't have proper security protections. They don't have negative pressure. You don't have any of these things. And, uh, you know, the idea that we're going to try to arm the so-called Syrian free rebels or do it through a proxy through Saudi Arabia or Qatar, uh, this is just stupid. And uh, ultimately, okay, well, let me, let me ask yeah, you a question, ultimately it's going to force Israel to use advanced nuclear and other weapons against these Muslim nations. And we're going to see a, a throw weight of nuclear weapons heading our way, too. So, uh, you know, this is not just going to be isolated to the Middle East. This is going to get ugly. Now, this Dr. Lipkin that's running the Columbia, Univer Univers Columbia University Laboratory, he says that the uh, bat samples that they brought in that they thought contained the MERS virus uh, disappeared or they were unable to use them or they couldn't get any more um, virus blowed out of them. Do you think that they uh, moved that to a BSL-4 someplace to develop their own bioweapon? Well, we know that uh, the latest word is that uh, uh, some of the people that are top virologists have actually tried to come out and patent the virus itself so they can patent, quote, the vaccine or cure. topics that Joel has on here that I want to mention but uh, his analysis was really scary in terms of this flight this crash of Bo the Boeing 777 Asiana jet it basically means there was nepotism in the uh, Korean Air Force where they brought in a pilot that basically no business flying that jet didn't have enough air hours in a simulator and uh, literally came in short of the runway and then tried to pull up and then eventually crashed it's literally miraculous only two people died even the two stewardesses were thrown free from the aircraft and didn't die or had developed what we call serious injuries that's a miracle so that's one of a number of situations going on the situation situation too with uh, Trayvon Martin there's paid protesters that are out there on behalf of Trayvon Martin um, so Newsmax came out with a report revealing the Department of Justice paid in instigators to go down to Florida and we know that uh, there's a number of these uh, what, what's the name of the group that was back in the 60s it's the 
Black, the Black Panthers. Panthers. Yeah, they're flying a whole lot of people down there to go in and cause trouble. Uh, bad idea, guys. Um, this is going to come back on you. We don't need this kind of stuff. Americans, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. We need to realize we're Americans first. And we need to stop all this racial crap. And we need to stop splitting America up and ending up with a neo-Nazi backlash. Because if you start uh, killing whitey, uh, you're going to find out that this is going to get turned really ugly. And uh, the black neighborhoods, of course, they want to bring police in there. Uh, you know, I saw the movie, the miniseries on television called The Wire. Well, that was really mismanaged. What they want to do is bring in drones, bring in uh, everything you can imagine, right out of hell, to all these black communities. So what will happen to you if you do riot and go out of control is you'll have martial law in the infested inner cities in America. And they'll do full, full force, you know, full court press martial law on you guys. So it's going to go badly really badly and they'll abuse of course after there's a backlash if they start you know, killing a number of white people the people will cry out and say yeah we need we need some degree of martial law and the government says oh boy thanks a lot we've been waiting for that call by the public they need a public collaboration whether it's an airborne plague or race riots in the inner cities because they are just smacking their lips dhs and these fusion centers to start a full force martial law they're just waiting for it and of course they're bringing it in just like joel says Martial law is not something that's a future thing. It's here now. We just don't have the full force uh, instigation of it because the pushback by the public is is so strong. I mean, they've been trying to remove guns. They've been trying to pass legislation, executive orders. I mean, even the, when he got reelected, Obama was told by some of the groups that just do an executive order and just do it yourself. No, uh, Mr. Obama, unless you're planning on living in a, a Pope mobile when you're out in public, this is not a smart thing to do. Because the Americans will not, 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 not like Aussies or Europeans or Brits, we're not going to give up our guns, period. doesn't matter what you say or do, even if you bring out an airborne plague, this is not going to happen. Plus, we know how to make unconventional weapons, too. We're very creative. Americans have got our serious backbone, and there's a lot of us. In fact, there's enough Americans. I've heard 94 million armed Americans with half a billion guns. And don't matter about how many bullets you manage to sequester and perhaps you don't want to recycle and all the other stuff. We've been doing this since long before you ever showed in the scene, Obama, when you're a junior senator in Illinois. America has, have been seeing it right back from George Bush Sr., right through Billy Clinton, etc., that the powers that be, the proxy state of the globalists, wanted disarmed America, destroyed America, a disindustrialized America, a deconstructed America, and it's not going to happen. And as we see things closing, that's why I'm meeting with people to talk about encrypted peer-to-peer -peer networks and fully encrypted, uh, we call cyberspace cloud systems for communications. No matter what they say, we will be civilly disobedient. We will be, you know, like a V for Vendetta. This isn't going anywhere. And by the way, if you have any food supplies longer than two weeks, you're already on a list of someone who's got food supplies stored so they quote, think they know where it is and they're going to acquire it. Guess what? Bad idea, guys. You might get to the first couple of homes, but I tell you, if you continue doing it, a pattern of it, it's going to be a death sentence for those people who think they're going to go home to home and start grabbing people's stuff. So, you know, like, the, like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who said in the Gulag Archipelago years ago, if they think it's a joke, uh, if we had known where we would burn with desire under the frozen wasteland of the gulag, we would have pounced on them like wild rats with every farm implement, uh, you know, dinner knife or any other implement we could get in our hands in the stairwells and the halls. And no one would be foolish enough to go to the apartments and the buildings and the tenements to pull people away and put them in trains heading off to the the, the frozen wilds to die or to be die of disease or, or literally hypothermia in Siberia. Wouldn't happen. But guess what? We're not Russians. We're not Germans. We're not Brits. We're not Aussies. We're not Canadians. We're Americans. And by the way, Canadians aren't passive either. If they think they're going to crush Canadians, they're just a little bit less boisterous about it. But Canadians are armed to the teeth. They don't trust their government either. Because they know this is all globalism. It doesn't matter. You're a Canuck or an American or a Mexican or a Guatemalan. The globalists don't care. To them, it's just a GPS location on a map. Right? 
Okay. Um, now, uh, this, this Dr. Lipkin has these samples uh, in, uh, in the middle of New York City at Columbia University. He said they, uh, right. he's very transparent. He said a small trace of the virus taken from an insect-eating bat looked to be a match for the MERS virus. But the, and this was when he went on his first trip to Saudi Arabia uh, last October. And uh, but he said the sample in the shipment arrived in poor condition, essentially ruined. Well, they don't have a way to get rid of uh, these samples. I mean, that's credible. Uh, did he throw them in the trash? Did he send them to uh, the to the government laboratory? Well, they don't get them in the know. trash. They this have to be incinerated. Thing, to uh, me, just just doesn't make sense. Well, what, what we have is we had a few years ago, in 2009, one of the chief virologists from Canberra, who's been a virologist for the Canberra and Australian government for 30 years and was developing Relenza with the major drug companies, that was the primary drug we use now against H1N1, H5N1. He came out and said that the virus H1N1 was a recombinant, triple uh, recombinant virus, which means it's a lab virus. This last week, I just got a call last night from Paul Martin that the H7N9 from China is a triple recombinant, which means it's a lab virus. These guys are ready. They got all the nations of the world signed up to say, we're going to hand over our military and our medical system to you, the United Nations and the World Health Organization, if we have an airborne plague. They're not going to get cooperation from the public unless they have something like an airborne plague and a bond market blowout. We have them. The timing tells me that sometime in the next 6 to 18 months, we're going to have those things happen. And, of course, we know Bernanke's going, which means they're already having earthquakes and, you know, foreshocks from the stock market. We know an airborne plague is coming because they want a new financial system. The charter for the Federal Reserve, the charter for the tax system, the income tax, is over Christmas Eve. You remember the uh, show The Nightmare Before Christmas? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? This Christmas Eve, the Fed Reserve is done. The IRS uh, is it's done. Not at the end of the so they're going to replace year, it with at something. The end of the calendar year? It's, it's, the, it's Christmas Eve is when the 100 years is up. Oh, okay. This year. Okay. Right, so they have to actually institute something to replace it. This is, they might try to do something like give a flat tax or whatever. Even if it was something that could make sense, they'll do a twist that'll be nasty. Uh, like a biometric world ID system where they can track everything. Remember now, the, the, the word that I heard from the guys working on the virtual world project is, if we can control your SIM, we've got control of you. And uh, I can tell people specific details. I've had Tex Mars who wrote the Operation Lucid. He, they have a cybernetic copy of you and your entire database in an operational data architecture system of schema of knowing your whereabouts that's why you can even buy these little tags with you for your cell phone your whereabouts down to a cubic meter your purchasing products your friends now they got facebook twitter and all these things these are all basically nsa cia data gathering things with these so-called proxy inventors out there that supposedly are so brilliant now the fact is these are all plans to bring in a globalist cybernetic control matrix and as Joel Skousen says all five parts of it are fully operational they just haven't even exercised it all yet because they don't want to freak out the wildebeest herd i.e. of Americans but they're waiting timing 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 by the way we reached a UV index of five today I mean ten today yeah yeah, and you know, we're getting more and more reports of people and their animals even being burnt outside. Don't go up between 10 and 2, 2.30. Don't. Bad idea.